Uh, first of all, I want to thank you for supporting this policy bill. The Audit of the Federal Reserve, I, I think after 100 years, it's time they get audited. Yeah. And while I certainly appreciate my countrymen here showing up and voicing their opinions about health care, because I think that's important, and I am a little person that pays for my own health care, and very happy with it. I think we're missing a much larger issue here. The issue is we have an administration up there that now has almost three dozen czars up there. These folks, these folks are, unanswerable, are unanswerable, unanswerable to anybody. We have czars up there that want to shut down free speech. These people, Von Johns is a self-proclaimed radical communist. I think what we see with the takeover of our health care system, uh, I think what we see, this is just a small shift in a pattern of events that we're seeing to basically take over the lives of the American people. We've sacrificed, each one of us in here folks have sacrificed men and women all over this country in foreign countries fighting the same type of government that is being established in the America. I thank you for your service. I thank all y'all veterans for your service. But this isn't about Republicanism. This isn't about Democrats. What we're dealing with here is freedom versus communism. And we're seeing an alternative government being built under our very nose. Amen. And we're seeing our representatives. Three weeks ago, I was on GoArmy.gov, and I was also on the National Guard website. They were advertising for internment specialists, people that would be willing to man internment facilities. Two weeks ago, the Pentagon comes out and says they want 400,000 troops on the American streets. Folks, they said it couldn't happen in this country. While we've been talking about bread and circuses, it's been happening in this country. What we're hearing here is what one person can take from another person to support their needs. And we have a government that's perfectly willing to take from this man and give it to this lady. And while although that's a very commendable thing, Karl Marx's basic tenet was from each according to their ability to each according to their needs. We have Marxism. We have communism in this country. And we are going to wake up in the very near future when I'm busy. We're going to lose emergency away from having a dictatorship where all of us, none of us, will have a vote over how this government is run. Keep talking. Now, you tell me, am I supposed to sleep at night knowing that the government has my best interest at heart when all they have to do is create a national emergency and he becomes a dictator? That's not wants to shut down the internet in the case of a national emergency. We have a czar up there now that wants to shut down free speech. You say you're a First Amendment proponent? we got a czar up there right now that wants everything that's broadcast, be it radio or TV, gets filtered through the White House before it is dispersed and disseminated among the American people. We have a czar up there that says the CIA shouldn't be allowed to interrogate people. Now listen, I assure you I am not for torture, and I can beat up on George Bush as quick as I can beat up on Barack Obama, but I will tell you this, they want to take an accountable CIA and the ability to torture people, take it out of their hands, and they want it in the White House. That's where they want the ability to interrogate people. <laughs> The people that they're going after, 
These internment facilities, Janet Napolitano has said, the people on the watch list are pro-Second Amendment, they're anti-abortionists, they're pro-constitutionalists, they are people that speak out about the global government. They're people that want restrained uh, illegal immigration in this country. They're people that speak out against the policies of this administration. Sir, I ask you, where are we free? Amen. Uh, to the Ron Paul uh, uh, audit the Fed and other things related to that, um, I think he may have parted, but uh, the points have remained. Uh, I do believe in auditing the Fed. I do believe that it is the black box. I mean, yes, Congress has been spending a lot of money, but the things the Federal Reserve has done would just boggle the mind in terms of trillions in terms of devaluation of the currency and other things. The fact that as an elected member of Congress, I can't get a straight answer on where the TARP money went um, at Treasury. Also, I find horrifying, um, and again was critical of that uh, under the last administration and this one. Um, I have also been critical of and voted against other efforts where it was a move to federal power. I voted against the Food Safety Act, which sounds great, how could you be against food safety, but I saw as being really a way to stick it to small and independent farmers, uh, like with so many things in Washington. The showdown at the end of the day is less Republican versus Democrat than big guys versus little guys, and usually in bills like that it works out that way. Same reason I voted against uh, having tobacco handed over to the FDA. Uh, it really was something that most of the big tobacco companies were on board with by the end, but the tobacco farmers were not. And that's, uh, again, what you see so often more than even the partisan divide up there. Uh, to the question of czars, uh, you know, first and foremost, I think that if you're appointing someone who's going to be making the kind of decisions that have traditionally been done by someone who has to go through the nomination process, they should have to go through the nomination process. It's just that simple. Um, I think, you know, the Supreme Court was very clear with the Bush administration that they were not having enough checks and balances with Congress. I think those same principles apply here. I will tell you there's one specific problem that's come up, you've probably seen headlines in addition to the czar headlines, about how the Obama administration has had trouble filling some of its senior posts. Well, one thing that happened that started out as a good thing was uh, there were these ethics reforms put in a few years back because people would go into government, they would regulate, say, the drug companies, and then they would go and take a multi-million dollar job with the drug companies the next year. And lo and behold, those regs they wrote were really nice to the drug companies. So there was an ethics rule passed, which I think made sense, of saying, well, for three years after leaving government, you can't work in the industry that you were involved in. That sounds good, the problem now is in trying to recruit some of the top talent from various sectors where we really do want to get talent from, people are like, well, I'll go work for two or three years for a small fraction of what I make. I may make five, six million dollars a year here, but I'll go and take the $150,000 government salary for three years. But I don't want to then have to spend three years out of no man's land not working in the very sector I've trained my whole life on. So there's been a little bit of an unintended consequence there, and I'm sympathetic to that. But the answer can't be to circumvent the original rule and simply not have people go through congressional uh, oversight. It's got to be to fix however we can uh, those issues. As to the issue of a move towards dictatorship, uh, you know, one of the great things, obviously, in our democracy is the right for people not only to, to hold a belief like that, but to, to organize around it, to stand up for that. Uh, I think this was an administration that came in through a democratic election. Uh, I think it will be re-elected or be, be beaten at the, at the ballot box in the same way that I will be either re-elected or beaten at the ballot box. I don't think we're on the verge of dictatorship. I think we will continue to see an engaged citizen. Uh,